I'm Coach Joseph Sam, and I got X. You next up, and you ain't been on sports like talk. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, you better hit him up. Look, you breaking next, and you up next. Keep the queens go hard. Rise the star on the big scene. Make them know who you are. You don't break a sweat. Don't settle for less. They put you through that test. Your resume that flex. Who got next? Who got next? SLT, ready, set, go. Who got next? Who got next? Living my dreams and all your goals. Who got next? Who got next? You can ask B. Jones or head coach. Who got next? Who got next? SLT Nation! Welcome back to Season 3 of Sports Life Talks. You got next, a platform that gives exposure to the voices of tomorrow. That's right, we're talking to rising stars in our communities, individuals who are doing big things and accomplishing big dreams. And KT, you smell that? Somebody just cranked up the lawnmower and the grass is getting cut. We got football, baby. We are back to football season. I think this might be just the best part of the year. But it, with the best part of the year comes some very, very, very special guests. We got to tell y'all some stories from the other side and some guys who are moving mountains and teaching young men how to just how to just be great on the field and off the field. So we at home this episode. Arlington Bowie, stand up. We got your football head coach. This dude was Dave Campbell's 40 under 40. He's made the playoff 12 times out of the 15 years coaching. 15 years in the game. Let's make some noise for Coach Joseph Sam. How you doing today, Coach? I'm doing great, man. I appreciate you guys definitely bringing me on and uh, being a part of this show. I know I've watched y'all from afar. Oh, I've always been a fan. We appreciate it, Coach. We can't wait to get out there uh, to see what what's cooking over there in Volunteer Nation. Hey, we we've been following y'all, so uh, so 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 we appreciate that uh, as as well. So hey, before we get started, all into both. We've been here before. Y'all know we came out there and show some love, to Dominique Villa Quartz, one of your very own. So it's time. To hold, on, hold on, B. That's not only it, man. We had somebody else on the show now. Somebody yeah, that rocks That's Coach, hard. Coach Kelly Carruthers. Yeah. That's right. We had Coach Kelly Carruthers. We've been out there to Bowie a couple of times, Coach. And B. Jones. Now, the <laughs> new head coach, Coach Robinson. We had on the show as well. That's right. That's right. So, y'all got to show us some love. I am your host, the mouth of the South. B. Jones, the OG, all things Louisiana. Put your L's up, Mr. Yee is in the building and i'm rocking alongside my brother from another mother the other side of the logo hey the quiet storm the head coach kt how you feeling today kev feeling great b jump i've actually met coach in person in, in city hill there's a little spot where all the coaches were coach dixon's brother was djing so i met him there also i'm pretty sure i'm going to see him at the convocation because you know i'm a part of all the isd as well so B. Jones, answer your question. I'm, I'm doing great, man. Let's turn up. This is a football episode. This is the season. Like you said, the grass, even though, you know, with the allergies, the grass ain't really good. But who cares? <laughs> it's all about football, man. Let's go. Let's hey, turn up. Everybody know what it smells like when you pull up on a football stadium and then Friday night, you see all the little crickets flying in the air. It's something special about this time of the year, man. Everybody know what that, what that experience is like. But check this out, Arlington Bowie. We count on y'all to do some big things. We need y'all help right now. And you know what? As much as I would love your dollar or two dollars or ten dollars it ain't about that we need support by way of clicks we need y'all to help us to get in the algorithm and to grow this show into something amazing and it's all on you that's right on the count of three i'm gonna scream out and hoot and holler and i need you to do three things the first one i need you to do is tap that like button just put it in the algorithm number two i need you to smash that subscribe button become part of our family we got over 90 episodes left in the year probably at the time this show we probably got about 60 or 70 but it's about to be nuts it's about to be bananas and then uh and then lastly we need you to share this episode to the first five to six people that come to your mind that's right that's how easy it is hit two buttons and share it with your friends and family, and you can help us out enormously. That's that's how critical it is. Coach Sam, is Arlington Bowie gonna rock with us? Oh, uh, you know, you know Volunteer Nation with y'all already. <laughs> All right, here we go. On the count of three, let's do it like we true to it. One, two, three. 
Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Welcome to the Sports Life Talk family. Kevin, that's my favorite part of the show. We got all these new dings coming on. My phone going loud. I'm like, yeah. Hey, so we welcome y'all to the family. Check this out. If you smash that subscribe button, leave us a fire emoji in the chat so we can reintroduce ourselves to you. We're going to speak. And when y'all see us out there at Arlington Bowie this fall, make sure y'all come up to us and give us some dap, give us a five, show us some love. Hey, but without further ado, Coach Joseph Sam, are you ready for the Sports Life Talk initiation? Oh, you already know it, baby. I'm I'm fired up. All right. This sounds like a coach ready to get, get that whistle. It like this, this man ready to grab that clipboard and do some things. Let's go, Coach. All right. To initiate you into the SLT family, got to give us your top five music artists. Top five music artists. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go Zero. I'm going to go Big Tuck. Oh uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I, I like the kid a little old school. Uh, I do like little baby the kid, the kids. I'm, I'm a pot guy, and I'm a Nas guy. So uh, those would be my top five. Kevin, I know you you salivating over there. <laughs> the only thing he was missing was an old clip. That's my hood. All right, so coach, <laughs> we like to rank everybody's top five, and the highest you can get is five. But with a, a top five like that, B Jones, there's no way I give anything less than five. What you giving them, man? I can't give anything less than ten. How long did you say you've been coaching? Oh, Kevin, years. 15 years in the game. <laughs> you know what that mean, NB. Let's go. Give me the All right, so coach, I didn't add, I didn't tell you this beforehand, but I forgot what I was going. Oh no. So um, would you rather be a singer or a dancer? Uh, I'm gonna say a singer. Uh, you know, I'm a I can't hit all the notes, but I can carry a tune. See, see, everybody say sing. I'm starting to notice that, that you know, I think we've only had one or two people say dancers. I, I just, it, that just be real. People who sing a lot, they don't kind of get on your nerves, coach. The ones that just can't even say, hey, say a sentence to you without singing. They don't yeah, kind of. That's what karaoke is for. That's what karaoke is for. <laughs> oh, so you got to know, you gotta know your lane. You got to know your lane when it comes to singing. You got to know your lane. Some people. They, they, you just need to stick to the shower. Some people can do a little karaoke. <laughs> Some people, you know, they can sing in front of the church and, you know, in, in front of crowds. See, I'm more that karaoke shower type guy. I'm not, I'm not, I can't sing in front of crowds like that. Uh -uh. And on top of that, B. Jones, just think about it. If you can sing like Wanye from Boys and Men or uh, Brian McKnight before we were married, come on, B. <laughs> come on, B. <laughs> but that's for another episode. We're going to move right along before I get in trouble. All right, so what is something that football has taught you that you can use when you're not on the field? Honestly, uh, outside of my parents, my dad, football has taught me how to be a man and manage time, you know, how to work through adversity. I think that's uh, – I think those are the three biggest things I've learned from the game of football on top of, obviously, you know, working hard, you know, being out in the hot sun, all those different things. But uh, to me, I've learned more life lessons. That's, that's one of the reasons why I decided to get into coaching is because I wanted to pass the life lessons I've learned to the players that, you know, I'm fortunate enough to coach. All right, so what advice would you give your younger coaching self? And I want you to be honest here. Uh, one thing I would tell my younger coaching self is to uh, be humble. You know, don't be so don't be so caught up in uh, trying to get to your destination that you don't enjoy where you're at. And uh, I know I kind of did that a little bit early, but I'm also appreciative of the fact that I started out, you know, on the middle in the middle school ranks uh, and kind of worked my way up, you know, and uh, I actually appreciate some of my middle school coaching days because it's kind of helped me uh, shape me into the coach I am right now. So could 17 year old Joseph play for the head coach, Joseph Sam? Absolutely. I ain't going to like head coach Joseph Sam. <laughs> He's going he gonna to get my tail when I when I try to toe that line, but I could definitely play for him because the fact is, the, the fact of the matter is I know he's coming from a good place. It's not going to be be ripping his tail just just to be ripping tail. I know he's going to tell me the why behind why he's getting on to me or why he's doing what he's doing. What's the best football movie of all time? Best football movie of all time? Shoot, that's easy. The program. Easy. 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 Hey. easy. Hey, give, give, give him five more. Give him five more for that alone. Hey, 
Hey, coach, I absolutely, coach, when I was, I was in middle school when the program come out, and because of the scene where they laid down in the middle of the road, kids, yeah. we couldn't go see it. They was like, hey, yeah. it's raining all. Kids can't go see So I had to sneak in to watch the program, yeah. and the first time I saw it, man, I absolutely loved that movie. Matter of fact, I'm going to go put it on right after this. <laughs> now, look. You can't beat that movie. You got football and you got Halle Berry, B. Jones. Come oh, on, yeah, man. That's a great Halle combination. Berry. I'll stop yeah. playing. All right. So I got so excited earlier that I, I, I missed a step in my initiation. So, Coach, so since every good superhero needs their own theme music, what would your theme song be? <laughs> uh, my my theme su- music would be, uh, uh, I, I'm going to choose two if that's okay. Go ahead, Coach. Go ahead. I'm gonna say not a stain on me. Oh, my big tuck. Or I'm gonna go uh the man right here by Mystical. <laughs> hey, that's mine. <laughs> that's mine, coach. <laughs> hey, that's mine. Hey, yeah. the man yeah. right here. <laughs> All right, coach. So B and I, we're gonna produce a movie that's centered around you. Mm-hmm. The one thing that we're missing is a lead actor. So who should we get to play you in the story of your life? Uh well the the number one person passed I go uh I go Michael B Jordan Michael B Jordan I I was gonna sign a Kamar Usman to play you man because you know he ripped he chiseled you know what I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> plus we can afford Usman yeah, yeah I don't know if we get Michael B Jordan on our budget man <laughs> B Jones can you play him I think we're about to get you to play Coach Sam in the story man that's how broke we gonna be all right Coach so this is probably the most important question I'm gonna ask you during the initiation okay. Mm-hmm. B. Jones and I, man, we love to travel. And when you travel, you got to eat. So what's that one food spot in Arlington that we got to go to that gets your stamp of approval and what's your go-to meal? Ooh, all right. So, because there's a lot of them. I'm going to say TJ's Catfish. And shoot, there's really the whole menu. I ain't even going to lie to you. I, I order something different every time I'm at that bad boy. I usually go for the catfish with the fries and the wings. That's what I'm going for. Top two. Wait a minute. Fries and wings? What you mean wings? Like chicken wings? Yeah, like chicken wings. Yeah. Nah, Give please. Me. TJ. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> KT. I, I think I've seen it. Isn't that the one that's like red and white? Like the yeah. logo? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got I to gotta go Am to I going to be able to eat that and then still come watch a three-hour football game, Coach? I mean, hey, the itis is real when you go over there. <laughs> you got you to make some time. I'm going to take game. the rest of it to go after the game. Yeah. You got to microwave yeah, yeah. your office. I can heat it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now it's time for the You Got Next offering. We're passing our collection plates, and we want everybody to hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. Leave us your top five music artists your theme song, and your favorite superhero in the comments. And finally, go to our website, sltugotnext.com, to learn, to learn more about us and our other You Got Next family members. Now allow me to turn it over to B as we learn more about our newest family member, Coach Joseph Sam, to the show. So, B. Jones, go ahead and take it away, bro. KT, I bet when you say that You Got Next offer, I bet they get nervous. I bet they're like, we got to get some money? I ain't got no money. I don't want your money. We just want you to subscribe. (laughs) Become a part of the family. But you know what? We do got cash app, so you want to send us a couple dollars. I mean, that TJ cat is probably one about $15 a plate, right? I try to tell you. All right, Coach Sam, let's talk about some football, man. We, hey, I don't, I, I just, I don't know. I, I'm different around this time of year. Y'all gonna see a different mouth of the South, but it's it's because we got the greatest sport. The only sport that I know that team has to work in cohesion, in, in orchestrated uh, fashion to do things on both sides of the ball, the strategy everywhere, it's one-on-ones everywhere. I mean, I just, I just absolutely love this game. But Coach, I got to ask you, why do you love the game of football? When did you fall in love with the game and when did you start playing? I fell in love with the game of football probably around age seven or eight, uh, playing Little League football in Lancaster, uh, play for the Lancaster uh, Cougars and then play for the Oak Cliff Redskins. Uh, I remember vividly, uh, I cleaned somebody's clock over the middle and I didn't even feel it. Like when I hit the dude, I didn't feel him. And it it just kind of that adrenaline rush of, uh, of doing that kind of put me in a different mindset. And I kind of been hooked ever since. Now, uh, KT gonna get mad about this coach, but, uh, but, but you actually took your, your, your career to Grambling State University in in my, (laughs) on my block in the state of Louisiana. Coach, In all actuality, um, when I went to Grambling, 
I was uh, being recruited as a two-sport athlete, football and baseball. A lot of people don't know that. And uh, Grambling was the one school that offered me that opportunity as a freshman. Obviously, I actually ended up sticking with baseball because I, I was starting as a freshman at Graham, and uh, they redshirted me in football. Uh, now, I tell everybody that's one of my regrets, though. I should have kept playing football because it wasn't like, you know, I, they did not not want me to play. I just, I should have stuck with it. Was was Doug Williams the coach back then? Who was the coach back then when you was when you were looking at it? No, nah, Doug was leaving. Doug recruited me. Uh, Melvin Spears took over though. Uh, All right, he was there my freshman year. Yeah, yeah. Wow, wow. <laughs> Man, see, you got some deep roots through the three one eight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, you, you, you know all about. Uh, that's where I'm from. I'm from Shreveport, about an hour away from Graham, maybe an hour yeah. and a half. Yeah. But uh, I ain't right, Coach Sam. So let's talk about this head coaching career. So of course you, you decide to go baseball. You leave baseball, or, or you leave the, the the amateur ranks, and mm -hmm. you gotta you got you looking up. You wake up one morning, you're like I got to do something with my life. Tell us tell us that version of Coach Sam's story. <laughs> So actually, I did not. Uh, I did not uh, get a degree in uh, education. For coaching, teaching, and coaching was not initially in my future. Um, I actually uh, tried corporate America. I was working in uh, at Walgreens at their corporate office, doing loss prevention and different things like that. Uh, and honestly, what kind of gravitated it, me to it is a mentor of mine. Uh, her name is uh, Valerie Nelson. I still, you know, we still talk to this day. Uh, I was. Hating corporate America. I ain't gonna sit here and I, <laughs> shirt and tie, sitting behind a desk, you know, staring at a computer all day. That just, I ain't wanna live that life. I ain't gonna sit here and act like it's not that I wasn't good at it. I just didn't like it. And uh, called her up one day. We hadn't talked since I graduated from college. This is like four months into, you know, adulthood. And I was just venting to her about how frustrated I was. And, uh, and she uh, was like, well, how about you uh, try try teaching and coaching, G-Man? I've been telling you since you was in college that you need to come on over. And so uh, went to a job fair, come to find out my high school principal uh, was working in Mesquite ISD at the time because uh, she worked for Mesquite ISD. And, uh, you know, I'm talking to him and come to find out his wife was uh, over HR at Mesquite ISD. So they was like uh, – Hey, we need you to do this. Can you pass a test in two weeks? And I was like, Hey, whatever I can do to get out of corporate America, I'm <laughs> like I'm I'm in. And so, because uh, at the time I thought I was gonna be a, honestly, I thought I was gonna be a financial advisor. And uh, honestly, she I got plugged in, took a middle school job because it was late. Uh, and honestly, just kind of fell in love with coaching, and you know, it's it's it's, it's been a bug ever since. Now, coach, I, I gotta, I gotta give you some credit. I gotta salute you because you, when you decided to become a coach, you did. Uh, did you realize that you were about to become a coach in one of the most nutrient-rich, athletic, most talent-dense community in America? There is no other amateur playing form, uh, playing field, uh, in every sport: baseball, tennis, tiddlywinks, football. It don't matter. It don't get no difficult. It don't get no tougher. Then down here in the DFW area, did you know you were walking into this this much sleepless nights? <laughs> honestly, honestly, I, I really felt like there's a, there hadn't been very many times where this has actually felt like work. I know a lot of people uh, like I go to work, but it's not it doesn't feel like work. Uh, and me growing up in Lancaster, Texas, I mean, it's just you, you play football. I mean, it is you play every sport when it's football season. You play football when it's basketball. You know, even the ones that can't hoop, you know, even the ones that can't hoop, everybody out there trying to shoot something up and, uh, you know, track when it's track, you know, baseball when it's baseball. It's just kind of one of those deals where you just kind of play, you just kind of play everything and, you know, you let the chips fall where they may. Now, how stressful is it when you look at the schedule, though, knowing that there's so many other top tier teams and you got to prepare these men and don't don't get me wrong all of the bowie got dogs y'all got coco <laughs> workman this year y'all had the kid uh Deont deontay last year was the number 14 Co I got, we got to talk about that what is it like to coach four and five star all americans like that i think i think your, your resume you got three players in nfl you got seven <laughs> all staters you've coached coach what is it like coaching that a massive amount of talent uh, it makes you a better coach because uh, most of those kids, they just want you to coach them. I, I don't think I've really coached a kid that's played on the college level or, you know, gotten all those accolades. They just want you to coach them. Uh, now, 
if you ain't on top of your stuff as a coach, that's when you look with those kind of kids, you kind of lose their respect. Really? Because you gotta be on you gotta be on your A game. And uh, you know, my first varsity job, uh, you know, where me and another guy coaching linebackers, oh, well, I was coaching safeties, another guy was coaching linebackers, but you know, Malik Jefferson and, and Matthew Adams are two of our linebackers. You know, Malik's with the Cowboys. Yeah, and Malik Jefferson. Adams is uh He's with the Bears, I think, right now. Yeah, Malik but, went so, on the UT and went yeah. off. Yeah, yeah, yeah Malik, so, I know who you're talking about. You know, those two kids, those two guys, shoot, you know, when they come in, they want to be coached hard, you know, and, and they're all different. You know, Malik wasn't like the Malik, you know, you had to teach Malik how to practice, but he kind of was the walkthrough. He was the walkthrough guy. You know, Matthew was more of the you could draw it up on the board. You just got to learn the learning style. You know, every kid is different. You know, Jalen Catalan was the film watcher. He could learn it from <laughs> film. So, you know, you Catalan too. I did coach Jalen <laughs> Catalan, yes, sir. <laughs> so, you know, every kid is different. You know, like, uh, you know, Jalen was the first kid to ever walk in my office and was like, hey, coach, teach me how to watch film. Yeah. So, he's a ball, ball hawk. I'm talking about, don't nothing cross Cat Catalan County without. <laughs> <laughs> Without putting his hands on it, yeah, man, yeah. I, 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 I kind of wish we could just sit down and hear some stories about about those cats, those dogs at practice. Man, I would love to see hear more about those amazing athletes. But we got to know about we got to know what what do we what do we get when we watch a, a Bowie team, coach? What kind of coach are you, and what can we expect from this 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 2023 2024 version of uh, of volunteers? So what you're gonna see is a, a dynamic, explosive, and then a blue collar football team. You know, one thing one thing I don't ever want to one of our football teams are called is soft. And we're gonna make sure that don't happen. Uh, you know, our these kids, they understand the standard. You know, we're sitting here practicing with the freshmen right now, and uh some of our older kids are helping with the drills and even pushing some of our freshmen, you know, with the practices. Like one day it was uh, you know, one of our D linemen, you know, one of our freshman old linemen, you know how it is. Sometimes they come in out of shape, you know, he's struggling a little bit. And then he decides to stop his workout and run with that with that kid. So I think there's a standard being set and there's a culture being set. Uh, and I think I think our culture is where it needs to be. And I'm just ready for us to take that next step as a program. Now, what does that next step look like for you, Coach? Are we talking? You may you've already have a lot of success. You had about an eighty something, eighty five percent clip <laughs> chance that you go into the playoffs, right? Twelve out of fifteen years <laughs> ain't bad. But uh, well, what does success look like for this this version of Bowie? I think the success looks like for this team is you know making a deep playoff run. You know we 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 don't talk about making the state championship. What we talk about is playing sixteen weeks. And uh, you know if you make it to the sixteen week you playing in the state championship, but there's, That's right. there's been five and five teams play 16 weeks. There's been undefeated teams. You know, there's been the four and six team that ends up playing 14, 15 weeks. So, you know, how can we get to the 16th week is kind of more of my, uh, more of my spiel than, than anything else. Uh, because, you know, at the, the years I was at Mesquite Boutique, we made it to state semis. The years we were at Mansfield Legacy, you know, make it to state semis. You know, in both of those teams, we didn't win the district championship, uh, but we peaked at the right time. We peaked when the playoffs rolled around. You know, Jonathan Alito's put me out of the state state game twice. You know, I got a little upset about that. But yeah, that's uh, a tough that's a tough task, though, Coach. <laughs> running up against Alito, that program is hey, that program is, is stacked every year. They got they got a factory. Now, now Coach, uh, oh God, okay. that's what you want to get to is just how can we get to the 16th week as a program. Now, Coach, you got this very charismatic attitude about yourself. You definitely, I, I can tell Kevin wanted to just ride in the car down the street with you and listen to that playlist, Big Truck and <laughs> <laughs> Zero. But coach, but, Coach, I don't know why I feel like you're fooling us a little bit. Because yeah. I've, I've watched the sideline videos, and I ain't seen you smile on uh, not, not a damn play on the sideline. We see them we see the whites right now, but on the sideline is more more hollering and and hand on hips and and, 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 and more a different type of energy, coach. Now now now, if we had the opportunity to get some of these players, some of these Malik Jeffersons, and, 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 and I'm gonna get Coco. We got we got to get Coco on this thing to oh, tell yeah. us what you like, coach. How they gonna describe you? Uh, they're gonna say Coach Sam is relatable but intense. You know, he's also gonna hold you. He's gonna hold you to a standard. You know, it's I'm like a light switch. You know, I'm kind of laid back, easy going as a head coach. I'm not. You know, as long as 
you know, coaches are doing their job and kids do their job, but they know there's a line not to cross. And uh, that light switch will come on real quick if, if you cross that line. Uh, but, you know, it's just what you see on the sideline, honestly, is intensity. It's it's energy. It's the same energy. It's just a different type of intensity. And uh, it's the same intensity I play with. I wouldn't want to talk much. I wouldn't want to talk trash. I wouldn't want to, you know, be hooping and hollering, but I, I, I was going to talk with these pads. So, you know, it's, just the same, it's pretty much the same kind of energy I coach with. I'm a, I'm a, my talking is going to be productive. It ain't going to be just hooping and hollering. Now, Coach, my last question, and then we'll get to the fun stuff. Yeah. Do you feel a certain responsibility being an African-American male and you coaching up a lot of these youth, a lot of these youngsters in which we know that the opportunity for kids to go left is what we call in the state of Louisiana. Going left mean they they doing the wrong things. And But you get a beautiful group of kids every year. You get the opportunity to mold these guys and to shape them into men. And and uh, you get to watch them over a four or five year period. And then all of a sudden you lose them and then it's the new batch coming in. Right. And so yeah. what uh, to, to, well, how do you feel about that responsibility? What does that mean to you to get this opportunity to be more than just a football coach to the community? Uh, I take great pride in it, honestly. Um, you know, I actually embrace it. I know some guys are like, well, you know, I embrace it because of the, the simple standpoint of, you know, I was them. I was the, the kid where I could have went left, I could have went right. You know, I even though I had both my parents at home, my dad had to work two jobs to make sure we was good. You know, my mom's working all the time to make sure we good uh, because – uh, you know, I tell everybody, I grew up over about a Wheatland Apartments. If you want to go <laughs> where I'm originally from, I'm from over there about a Wheatland Apartments. And if you ever been over there, you know what it's like. Uh, but, um, so I've been there and I know what pulls them, was trying to get them out. And but I want them to see me as a source of inspiration because I know every kid in my program is not going to want to play college football. Uh, but like I tell these kids, if college football ain't for you. You know, something after high school is, whether it is going to college, trade school, you know, military, you need to go do something productive. Like, you don't need to be here. And uh, I not only take that as a responsibility for the kids I coach, but also in the coaching community as well, as well because there's not a lot of guys that get the opportunity that I was afforded to, uh, you know, five years ago at uh, Fort Bend Hightower, you know, get my first head coaching job at 32. That That's, that's an anomaly for somebody that looks like me. And uh, but, you know, I, I want to be the guy that helps those guys because, you know, there's there's certain things that coaches do uh, that look like me that they don't understand. It's eliminating them from the process of trying to be that head coach, you know. And, yeah. uh, you know, one thing I've, I've told young coaches before is, you know, they'll come to a, uh, let's say come to a coaching convention or something like that. And, uh, you know, they're dressed one way when they should be dressed another way. And I. You know, I kind of hit them with the, hey, what's your goal? Because to me, before I say something to you, I want to hit you with your goals. And uh, they'll tell me that's this is their goal or whatnot. And if they're not, you know, presenting themselves in that way, I'll tell them, like, hey, bro, like, this ain't – if you're really trying to do this, you need to – there's a certain way you got to look. Like, and there's it's, – it's not me trying to, you know – but. The game is here for us to to win. We just got to understand what, what what we got. No, do. I get it, Coach. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, if I if I go into a bank <laughs> and somebody come out with some with some, some baggy stuff and he yeah. ain't going to have, I'm be like, man, you better get out. This boy ain't serious about money. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, uh, hey, so I, I know exactly what you say. You got to look the part. You got to yeah. look the part. Yeah. You know, everybody don't get to wear hoodies to work like me and KT. All right, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Coach. <laughs> Welcome to the championship rounds. This is the part of the show where Kevin and I, we're going to spar a little bit. We're going to put you in a little bit of a tough pickle. You got to answer some questions, but you are not officially calling all the shots. Have you ever played Would You Rather before, Coach? I have. I have. I have. All right. So, you know, we're going to ask you some tough choices. You select one of those choices. Whichever one you select, that host gains a point. The first host to get two points or the best out of three will win this episode's game of championship rounds. Kevin is the defending champ right now. He's on a nice little roll. I think he's won two or three. So come on, KT. Let's go. Let's roll with it. B. Jones, he took me back when he said the apartments over there in Wheatland because you got Wheatland Terrace, then you had the one behind 7-Eleven. What yep. you know about that, Kevin? What you know about that, though? I grew up over there, man. My mom had to drop me off at my cousin's house when she had to work, so I know about it, B. Everybody don't know about that free lunch and the mayonnaise sandwiches, big dog. It's, oh, my it's God. Life. It's a different life you had to live. I ain't gonna lie. That's 7-Eleven. That's why... 
you know, they, they cut the Doritos open, they put the yeah. chili and cheese, everything in there, B. Jones. Oh, <laughs> I may get some of that today. All right, so back to the show. Would you rather coach a player that no one gave them a chance, they make it to the Football Hall of Fame, and then their speech tells you they wouldn't be there without you, or... Or would you rather uh, you you coach it at school? You hire this up and coming. Nobody knows about him. He has no experience. He's a GA. You just you give him a chance. You give him his first coaching job, or her, or her. You give her a first coaching job, and that individual rises up in the ranks, wins the rings, and says they learned it all under Coach Joseph Sam. Ooh, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go with the player simply because. Uh, I feel like I've made an impact in society. Yeah, that's a good one. No, that's a good person. That's a good person. That's a good person. No. Yeah, right. he looked he look like Kamar Usman, Kevin. I'm not giving him an X. <laughs> <laughs> well, he told you, Wheatland. That means he can fight. You know, he heard us say over there behind, hey, behind that behind that Lord know what was going on over there at Wheatland. All right, here we go. Round two. All right, would you rather travel the world hosting your own food show on YouTube where you get to interview other college and high school football coaches, you know, picking their brains while eating at their favorite place to eat in their hometowns or... Or we have Netflix film a series, a, a Last Chance You style documentary called Vol Nation, in which we tell your story. We tell your coaching staff story and we get to feature some of these amazing, talented football players. But essentially, we want to see the, the, the secret ingredient that makes Arlington Bowie football go. Uh, I'm going to go with the Netflix series because I'm not a big cook. My, my wife is... I'm good on the grill, but my, my wife does most of the cooking, man. She if she, she would tell you that that show would last very long because uh, <laughs> if, if I can't put it on a Traeger or a Blackstone or a grill, I, I can't I can't fool with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Kevin. Hey, it's well, you would have had to cook. You'd be eating at other places, but I get it. I get it. Go ahead, dude. Go ahead. Uh, uh, All right, Coach, for the last round, we're going to take it to the sneaker game. Do you like sneakers, Coach? You're I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat of a sneakerhead. I'm somewhat okay, of a sneakerhead. Okay, okay. I'm, right. I'm not a big time sneakerhead. I got other coaches on my staff that are, that keep me right on that. But I'm, I, I, I do, I do like a good pair of shoes. Well, me and KT, we like to be self-proclaimed sneakerheads. We're not as probably as heavy-handed as some of those other guys, but we know to get a grab, a snatch, a drop or two, okay? We're the ones that's trying to get them. And, and as a matter of fact, every Wednesday night, we go live. And when we go live, we talk a little bit about sports and pop culture. But I do a segment called The Drop in which I talk about a new pair of sneakers that's coming out. So y'all come hang out with us every Wednesday nights at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. We go live for an hour, 70 minutes. It's a fun show, real fun show. Y'all can come be a part of that and be in the comments, et cetera, et cetera. But before the show, KT and I, we selected a pair of shoes we thought represented you, Coach. We said, let's 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 pick a pair of shoes that we think represent Coach Joseph Sam. So on the count of three, I'm going to count us down. I need you to say, hold that sneaker. All right? And when I say that, then me and Kevin going to put the shoes up on the screen. Whichever one you select, they will wear round three, and they will subsequently win this episode's game of championship rounds. Okay? All right. All right. Here we go. Three, two, one. Hold that sneaker. Ah, ah. I'm gonna have to go with the patent leathers. I'm a patent leather. I gotta go with the patent leathers. That's real good with the dunks. I'm about to go with the patent leathers. These, these your homage to your alumni. I, 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 said, I said we gotta throw it back to Grambling. <laughs> the patent leathers, though. Ah! I'm about to go. Them 11s hit different, though. Them 11s hit different. And B. Jones, it's, just, it's something about me too, man. I hit different too. You know what I'm saying? I ain't a football player though, but you know, I'm, I'm just saying. Them, them pair oh. of leathers. Hey, the first that was that was actually the first pair of Jordans I was ever able to afford. That's why they got a the Eleven's got a special place in my heart. They got a special place in my and heart. And I just had a feeling that that was his first pair of shoes that he owed B. Jones. <laughs> that was the first pair of J's I ever bought with my own money. So that's why I said that them, them hit with a them hit oh, with a different them hit with a different uh different thunder. Kevin can't win a game unless he would pull out the 11s. That's all right, though. It's all good. Come on. <laughs> uh, all right. The title of the show, Sports Life Talks, you, you got next, Coach Sam. In your own words, we notice a lot of you're still young, man. You're still doing major things, making major moves. Bowie got a lot to, to get accomplished. Uh, so what does the future hold for you, Coach Sam? Oh, uh, man, just keep making an impact on these kids. That's why I got into the game. That's why I got into the coaching game. You know, make a positive impact on society because we all know you know, 
regardless of the pathways that you know people can take when it comes to life, my personal opinion, uh, you know, it's always it could always be something productive. Like I told you, you know, what I tell my kids, you know, I understand, you know, we're using this game of football, but this game of football is to teach you about life. And you become a man, become a father, become a husband, you know, you can uh you can pass that down. Hopefully they can pass down the same lessons I'm teaching them to their kids because uh if it wasn't for coaches, if it wasn't for coaches, I ain't standing here today. You know, like coach, right. like coach Greg Williams, uh Andrew Jack, Sad Jackson, uh, you know, some of the guys that have mentored me along the way. You got your Chris Gilbert's, Carlos Lins, Anthony Chris's, you know, uh, Randy Jackson's, all these different guys, man, that have poured into my life. I just take it as homage to pour down to the next generation because I kind of feel like I'm in that buffer of, I'm still young enough to kind of know what's going on, but at the same time, you know, my experience, because given that I was, I started as a head coach so young, uh, I can also mentor some guys as well. So I always feel like I'm in that buffer zone. All right, I know you mentioned some coaches that you, you rocked with, but do you have any other shout outs you want to give? Man, obviously shout out to my wife, uh, Michaela. Uh, you know, she she's she's been my backbone through through this because we've been, you know, I know uh I hadn't I hadn't been perfect, but I'm all I'm uh, I'm uh, as a head coach, I'm always doing uh because of the, the head coaching grind, you know, I'm not always at home, but I always want to give her a shout out. Shout out to my fam, shout out to y'all guys, man, have me on. Shout out to my coaching staff because honestly. A head coach is only as good as his assistants. I know a lot of guys want to stick the chest out, puff the chest out, but uh, I got really good assistants on my staff as well. And uh, all the guys I've had the ability to coach with, I can't name everybody because that'd be about another 20 minutes, but, uh, you know, family, friends, you know, everybody that supported me and continues to support me on this coaching, coaching mission. You'd be amazed, Coach. We did have one coach come out here, and he gave us like 15 minutes worth of shout-outs. I had to cut that out the show. <laughs> no, I, had to, I had to do that. It was another show. I put it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I ain't going to do that to you. But, you know, definitely, like I say, wife, family, friends, you know, coaches I get to work with every day and coaches I have worked with, and every coach that's mentored me in some form or fashion. They all know who they are. I can give it out the special shout-outs, but they all know who they are, man, because – I talk to those guys every day, so. All right, Coach, so this is the part of the show where you get a chance to call the person that you think should have next. Tell them, hey, I got a chance to rock with B. Jones and KT. I told them my story. Why don't you do the same thing? With that said, Coach, who are you calling out? Who should have uh, next? I'm going to call out I'm gonna call out three guys. Uh, All right. You know, one of, one of them is my best, one of my best friends in the coaching game. Uh, two of my best friends in the coaching game. You got Demarcus Harris at, uh, at Mesquite High. You got uh, – uh, Marcus Shavers at McKinney High, you know, us being, you know, three African-American coaches in the, in the suburbs, that's kind of, it's kind of rare, you know, and uh, I would definitely, uh, I think one of the guys that's definitely up and coming in the coaching game as well uh, would be my boy, Jacoby Coleman. He's uh, the head coach at Skyline. He's definitely going to get that. I think he's going to get that thing turned around. I know he had a rough year last year, but uh, he's definitely got it on the right track. And I think he's going to get that thing turned around. So, those would be my three guys um, uh, that I would say they got next. All right. Well, y'all heard them. Coach Harris, Coach Shavers, Coach Coleman. Y'all are all officially on the clock. And, Coach, I'm smiling ear to ear because I definitely want all three of them dogs. They they, they got some big-time programs. We got to talk to them. We got, we got to do a better job of spreading the word of these uh, football coaches. One of the hardest jobs out there. Trust me. I, I know a Coach, period. Oh, I'm going to shout out. I'm going to shout out two more guys. I'm going to shout out uh, Shannon Hall at Mansfield Summit. That's my boy. And then Billy Skinner at Lamar. That's my guy, too. All right. He's so Skinner and, and, and Skinner, and you said uh, Hall? Yeah, Shannon Hall at Summit. Man, Hall. Summit. They're my, they're my guys, man. Hall, Summit, Coleman, Shavers, Harris. Y'all are all on the clock. We're going to be reaching out till we can get you on the show. Now, Coach, you got to reach out and let them know. Say, hey, these guys from the region hit y'all up. Y'all got to make sure y'all y'all don't ignore them because we want to uh, we want to tell their stories. But, Coach Joseph Sams, you got Next, you are the truth, coach. You're a trailblazer. You are a pioneer. I love your energy. I can't wait to see your team play. You are exemplary. You are extraordinary. You are elite. You deserve a yeet. yeet.
Hey, thank y'all for rocking with us one more again in another fire episode of Sports Life Talks. You got next. It's a truly a blessing to tell these stories and be a part of this. And we want you to be a part of it so much that we're going to give you the offer of the invitation to join us one more again. Go to our website, sltugotnext.com. If you want to be on the show, tap on the nominations tab. Tell us who you are. Tell us a little bit about your story. It's a beautiful website. It's easy. Come rock with us. Hey, tap in. On any of our social media channels at Sports Life Talk, we there all the time. We dropping gi- di- di- uh, dimes and gems every day. So come, uh, come tap in with us there. We would love to hear from you. And, uh, and if you see us out there, we coming to Bowie. Come show come us on. some love. Hey, hey, I, hey I got y'all. I got, I got y'all. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take y'all to TJ's and Damien's if y'all ever come through. Hey, we coming, we coming, Coach. So uh, I'm don't... right around the corner, B Jones. So you ain't said nothing but the word. Hey, once you said TJ's, we moved you up the calendar. We, we, we have you till October. We, <laughs> this looking like a September, September Labor Day type of fair. Now <laughs> with TJ's with these wings and, and, and catfish platter, that yeah. thing coming up, uh, coming up soon. But KT, congratulations on another win. So Let's close it out, man. Let's go home. Coach, thank you so much for rocking with us. Whatever you need from us, please let us know, and we got your back. But, B. Jones, I want to let you know, I met him in person, so everything he said is the truth, man. So I think Kit Cal is the one to introduce us, too, so shout out to her. Yeah. But, yeah, B. Jones, man, take it away. Go ahead. All right, here I go. The man right here. Hey, Coach Dan, <laughs> you the truth, man. We can't wait to see your, your team play. We're going to be watching you guys in the fall. Sports Life Talk Nation, we love y'all. Stay safe, be blessed, respect each other, and love one another because together we are better and keep dreaming big because you never know. Your story may be the next one featured on Sports Life Talks. You got next. Yeet! It was crazy. It's, I knew you had next because you always working, you always grinding, you're in your bag because you're always working. Like in due time, I just, I knew you got next. Oh, you did it, huh? Crack the code. You got next, you smashing goals. You want next, you need exposure. Well, sports like talk out the baddest show, like the baddest hut in the room. Podcast to tune into just for you to talk your shit. Talk your mushroom. You want what you eat and you should consume. Sports like talk from the late night to the afternoon, then rest repeat. Hit the like, leave a comment, or subscribe so you don't miss a beat. You got next, it's a small taste of a winning meal from a chef type of celebrity. What's up next is you, at least you better be. Yeah, you got next, yeah. I can feel it. Life talking this, yeah, yeah, yeah.